I recently read an article about how much wedding photographers charge. More specifically, it was kind of how much the top flight wedding photographers from all over the world were charging for their top rate packages. So this was not just one or two photographers. We are talking hundreds of photographers from numerous different countries. And pretty much all the photographers were charging in the region of two and a half to three and a half thousand for their top flight packages. Now, I don't charge that much for my wedding photography, but then I'm not a top flight wedding photographer. But whenever somebody's talking to me about my photography, what I shoot, as soon as I say I photograph weddings, they always say, oh, I bet you make a lot of money off that. Because I think the general public kind of have this perception that wedding photographers can just charge whatever they feel like and probably are living the life of Riley off in a mansion somewhere in Beverly Hills because they just make so much money. And that's really not the case. So today I want to talk about why are the professional wedding photographers charging as much as they do, especially when you think that budget photographers will do it for a lot less. Really, there are two factors to consider. The first is this, the second is this. So firstly, knowledge and experience. You have to remember, photography is an art, it's a skill. It's not something you just learn overnight. Nobody just picks up a camera and can start reproducing photographs like a professional. Wedding photographers or any other photographers for that matter, if they are kind of top of their game, top end, you can guarantee they have been doing that profession, they have been learning their skills for countless years. They have spent the time, honed their skills, learn how to create certain images, how to edit those images, how to get the most out of the equipment that they own. You know, it's no different than movie stars or athletes or anything like that. They've got to where they are by becoming the best at what they do. But that experience has two big advantages. Firstly, the images that you are going to get. They're going to likely be far more creative, far more unique, much more pleasing to look at than anything a kind of novice photographer could produce because a novice photographer hasn't learned how to do all of that yet. Secondly, peace of mind, because you're dealing with somebody who photographs stuff day in and day out. They know their equipment like the back of the hand. Everything to them is on autopilot. They're not having to think about what they're doing when they're taking a picture. They're focusing more on what photo are they going to get, not how to get it. They know how the flow of a wedding day goes. They know what people are expecting of them. They know how things are gonna go down. When it comes to things like the group shots, they know how to position people to get the nicest looking photographs. They know how to kind of talk to a bride and groom to be able to put their mind at rest. If you go in with someone who's not as experienced, then the day might get a little bit overwhelming. They might kind of focus more on getting the photographs rather than kind of talking to you, blending in with people. And so often when I've shot weddings, one of the things that people like to kind of always say to me is just that they didn't know I was there, that I just kind of blended in as one of the guests, which suits me perfectly because I kind of like the candid shots. And I, if people don't know I'm there, they're not looking for me. So suits me down to the ground. So knowledge, skill and experience obviously adds to the price, but there is a much bigger factor with why wedding photography is so expensive, the equipment that's being used. You can go out today and buy a brand new DSLR and a kit lens for a, probably about 500 pounds. So the public perception might be go out, spend 500 pounds buying a camera, off you go to a wedding, take a load of pictures. Not really how it works when you're dealing with professionals. Now, top flight wedding photographers don't usually use a camera body that's only four or five hundred pounds. They usually use ones like this, which are two or three thousand pounds. Because cameras like this produce better looking images, they work better in low light, they are far more rugged and reliable so that they can take a bit more of a battering. But then realistically, no self-respecting professional wedding photographer would turn up to a wedding with only one camera anyway. They would turn up with two. Because if you're at a wedding with only one camera and it stops working, then so do you. At least if the photographer has a second camera, if one camera stops working, they can carry on taking pictures the rest of the day and then they can worry about that tomorrow. If you haven't got a backup and that stops working, you're basically left with a couple of choices. Firstly is just give up, go home, send the bride and groom whatever images you did manage to capture if you've still got them. Or there's the possibility that when the camera goes, the memory card goes with it and you're left with no images. So the only thing you've got to show them bride and groom 
is their money going back into their bank account. Or you hope that a guest has a camera the same make as yours so you can carry on taking pictures with theirs. Still not very professional. So we've suddenly gone from a £500 entry level camera to two, two or three thousand pound professional level cameras. Now, if it's a full time wedding photographer, there might be times where they are photographing two or three weddings in the space of a week. And the repair time of a camera could well be two or three weeks, depending on what's wrong with it. So they might not have two cameras, they might have three. So if the first one breaks, that goes off for repair they still have two cameras to go to the rest of their weddings with. So a photographer might have six to nine thousand pounds worth of camera bodies before we've even got to the lenses. And lenses are the same story. You can get cheap lenses for one or two hundred pounds, but generally professional wedding photographers will be using top grade lenses to get the best possible looking images. Now, when I shoot weddings, there are generally four main lenses that I will carry around with me for the majority of the day. And they cost me about £700 each. So you're looking at three grand just in those four lenses. But I also have to bear in mind that if one of those lenses breaks, I'm suddenly left without that particular focal range. So I have three other more versatile zoom lenses that I carry around as a backup in case a lens breaks. So I turn up to a wedding, I've probably got about 10 or 11 thousand pounds just in camera bodies and lenses. Then also factor in that I've got memory cards and plenty of spare memory cards, batteries and spare batteries. Then I will usually use up to two flash guns during the day. So obviously I carry around three. I then have to have triggers and backup triggers for those flash guns and light stands and everything else. So actually it's probably more like 13, 14 thousand pounds worth of equipment. That's quite a step up from just a 500 pound camera. Basically work on the theory that wedding photographers have their full range of kit and then they also have a full backup kit as well. So you get a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge, but you also get a lot of equipment as well. And obviously whenever they're shooting a wedding, it's all wear and tear on the equipment as well. So at some point it's going to need to be fixed. It's going to need to be replaced. So all of that has to be factored in essentially to the price of a wedding. So the reason why professional photographers are so expensive is because professional photography is just so expensive. But you're at least safe in the knowledge that if you're hiring a professional photographer, they obviously know what they're doing, but also they have backup equipment. So if they are unfortunate enough that something does fail on them, they can at least carry on doing their job. If a memory card fails, they'll likely have backups of all of your photos, so you're not going to be left without. Then there's obviously the amount of time that they spend. You know, a full day's wedding is not just a full day's work. You spend a full day at the wedding. Generally, I will be at a wedding from kind of 9 a.m. till probably 9 p.m. So could be anything from 10 to 14 hours that I am at the wedding venue for. But that's just taking the pictures. You've then got to factor in editing the photos as well. So a full day's wedding, a photographer could spend the next three, four, five days of solid work just editing up those pictures to make them look as good as they can. So you're actually basically hiring them not for a day, but for more like a week. And these are kind of the areas where you're saving money by going with a more budget level photographer. And I have seen wedding photographers before who don't even bother to edit their photos. They might go to a wedding, take 2000 images and just literally send all of the images untouched to the client and say there you go which i don't like because one an image is never that good straight out of a camera you've got to edit the raw files to get the best looking shots possible and two generally with wedding photography some of the images aren't going to work you know they might miss focus you might miss the moment or you might take two or three of the same images just to make sure that, you know, people aren't blinking or something like that. So I don't think it's very professional to basically just say to the client, yeah, there you go. There's everything. You sift through all of it and see what you want to keep. Now, this obviously isn't a propaganda video to say don't hire novice photographers because I was a novice once. OK, every professional photographer on the planet has come from being a novice and worked their way up. When you're a novice, the only way to get gigs in the first place and get the experience 
is by offering them cheap. So it's not to say don't hire novice photographers. It's to say people wonder why wedding photographers charge as much as they do. It's not because they're just lapping up luxury and taking the mick. It's because the equipment they've got costs so much. The skills they've got cost so much. So when you're looking at a kind of very expensive wedding photographer versus a very cheap wedding photographer, there's a reason why there's so much more. So a lot of people aren't really bothered about having a professional wedding photographer. You know, they just want somebody to basically document the day so they have some nice memories. Fair enough. Novice photographers, great way for them to learn. But when you have somebody who wants the professional looking results, you're not going to get them from a budget level photographer. So that's it for this video. You know, if you are under the impression that wedding photographers charge a fortune and are off on a luxury yacht somewhere, that's not the case. They charge so much because they have so much equipment, they have that knowledge, they have that skill. If you want professional results and you want the peace of mind of, you know, if things go wrong, you're safe, then you're going to end up paying more for it. Obviously, you can save money, you know. You can get someone who's got the skill, who's maybe got some professional equipment, but might not have the security of having backups. But you might only be wanting to spend 150, 200 pounds on a photographer. Fair enough, but bear in mind, you get what you pay for. So your images might not look the best, or there's the risk that the equipment might fail and you might end up with nothing. The end of the day, you get what you pay for. If you're trying to do a wedding on a budget, then yeah, a budget photographer makes sense. If you are selling a kidney to pay for this wedding, is it really worth skimping out on a cheaper photographer and potentially risking your day? But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next one.